Is the Fast and Furious franchise scientifically accurate? The short answer is no. And yes. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things Fast and Furious get scientifically right and wrong. For this list, we'll be using physics, chemistry, and logic to show what the franchise got right and wrong about science. Since we'll be discussing major plot details from the movies, a spoiler warning is in effect. You've heard me say that you never turn your back on family. And I want to thank you all for never turning your back on me. Number 10. Lifting fingerprints from a bikini. Right. Fast Five. Not gonna be able to get his fingerprints out here. Need to do some more recon. Call in a couple extra guys. Or you don't send the men to do a woman's job. In Fast Five, Dom and his crew decide to break into Crime Lord Hernan Reyes' safe. How you know he's Reyes' handprint? You got a hundred million dollars in a safe. You gonna put somebody else's handprint on it? But they need his handprint to crack it open. When Giselle is sent to acquire Hernan's handprint, she puts on a bikini and lets the Crime Lord feel her up. His gross groping allows them to get the print they need. Although the sequence looks like an excuse to get Giselle in a bikini, it's 100% legitimate. A 2011 research study conducted at University of Aberté Dundee showed that handprints could be lifted from fabric. While the process of getting the print is complicated, Dom's crew appeared to have the time and resources to make it work. Giselle's risque methods are scientifically sound. I thought she was more of a thong man. I got the print. Wait. Okay, that's crazy. Number nine, getting a nitrous boost. Right. Various. No Fast and Furious movie would be complete without at least one nitrous oxide scene. Throughout the franchise, drivers use this chemical compound to get an extra speed boost at crucial moments. But what really happens when Dom hits that red NOS button? Get out of there. I'm working on it. Stop working on it and do it. When nitrous oxide is heated to high temperatures, it provides more oxygen to an engine. The increased oxygen allows the fuel to burn faster. The quicker burn increases the engine's horsepower and allows the car to speed up. Between its affordable price and easy installation, nitrous oxide is a sensible way to give the car a boost. Well, these cars are the only factory to can do better than 180K, they can't catch you. They don't even try. While it may not give a car enough speed to jump over bridges or fly over gaps, nitrous will get you to your destination faster. Don't miss. Number 8. Teaching us how to drift. Right. The Fast and the Furious. Tokyo Drift. There's no wax on, wax off for drifting. Learn by doing it. The first drifters invented drifting out here in the mountains by feeling it. Feeling. While Tokyo Drift isn't the most beloved movie in the franchise, even its detractors have to admit the drifting stunts are impressive. Protagonist Sean looks badass as he drifts around winding roads and tight turns in souped-up cars. Although his technique looks too good to be true, a lot of what we see is real. The mechanics of how drifting works are fairly accurate, and behind-the-scenes interviews and footage confirm that professional drivers really can drift as well as the film suggests. You gotta punch the gas, then drop the brake, because that's how you get them spinning. But then you have to find like that middle ground, and you have to know, I don't know, it's, it's all in the steering and what you have on the gas, and then you have to tap the brake every so often, because otherwise you'll just spin it all the way out. Unfortunately, there's no research that proves Sean could master this driving technique in such a short time, but with enough practice and determination, you could learn to drift as well as he does. Number 7. Jumping onto a moving yacht. Wrong. Too fast, too furious. When Carter Verone kidnaps Monica Fuentes, forces her onto his yacht, and sails away, Brian races after her. Boat. Car. Boat. You're not gonna do what I think you're gonna do. Yeah, I think so. He launches his car off a conveniently placed ramp and crashes right into the boat. But his crazy gamble wasn't possible. Let's assume Brian was somehow able to predict where the moving boat would be when he launched off the ramp. His car speed would still be an issue. We see that Brian is traveling nearly 120 miles per hour when he hits the ramp. Based on the angle of the ramp, how long the jump lasts, and the distance between his vehicle and the boat, his speed would have caused him to sail right over the yacht 
instead of into it. Brian should have just called the Coast Guard instead. You okay? Yeah. I'm great. Number six, stealing the vault. Wrong. Fast five. During Fast Five, Dom and Brian tow a vault full of cash at high speeds with two Dodge Chargers. But the weight would make that impossible. Harvard physicist Dr. Randall Kelly estimated that the combined weight of the vault and $100 million housed inside comes out to around 14,000 kilograms. Well, the plan's working. You guys have every corrupt cop in Rio on your tail. You guys have to move fast. After factoring in the mass of the cars, friction of the road, and how long it took the cars to accelerate, the doctor calculated that they could only tow the vault together at a sad 2.3 miles per hour. Guys, I'm hearing all this chatter. Did you just take out a bank? To make matters worse, if it hit anything, the cars would lose momentum and move even slower. You could literally jog faster than they would have been able to drive during this heist. It's a hell of a mess. That yeah, is. Number five, flying through skyscrapers. Wrong, Furious 7. Don, cars don't fly! Cars don't fly! Furious 7 featured a scene where Dom drives through a skyscraper window so fast that he flies into the building next door. Shortly after landing, he speeds through another window, jumps to another skyscraper, and leaps out the car at the last second. Physicist Lee Loveridge said that if Dom had managed to accelerate the car to 100 miles per hour before the first jump and both the glass and wind offered no resistance somehow, the jumps might be extremely deadly. If the car's shock absorbers weren't specifically prepared for this insane stunt, the car and anyone inside would be wrecked whenever it landed. And even if Dom jumped out that speeding car, he'd move so fast that he couldn't stop himself from sailing out the window. Number 4. Catching Letty in Midair Wrong. Fast and Furious 6. What's she doing? Scientists determine an object's momentum by multiplying its mass and velocity. This formula makes one Fast and Furious scene utterly impossible. Hey! We do what we do best! We improvise, alright? When Letty is standing on a speeding tank that crashes, she's launched leftwards into the air. Dom matches the tank speed and launches himself off his car up and to the right. He proceeds to catch her while she's traveling left and aims their bodies to land on a windshield on the right. Since they're moving about the same speed, Dom needed to weigh tremendously more than Letty to overcome her leftward momentum. Unless Vin Diesel has enough muscle to defy the laws of physics, Letty's momentum ultimately would have pulled them away from the path of the safe glass windshield. Number 3. Brian outruns a falling bus. Right. Furious 7. Shortly after saving a captive hacker, Brian gets trapped inside a bus that teeters on the edge of a cliff. Too slow. Just before it falls, Brian runs along the top of the bus and jumps to safety. The physics of his perilous run check out. Dr. Matthew Claban said if Brian moves faster than the bus falls, he should be able to outrun the vehicle before it drops. Although he found Brian's jump questionable, that can be blamed on the film's ending. If you still have trouble believing the run was possible, behind the scenes footage showed a stuntman practically performing the stunt with a few wires thrown in for safety. But he was really running on it, it really went off a cliff, and then we really took the bus and dropped it off of another cliff that went on forever and ever. Both science and anecdotal evidence prove Brian's legs are enough to defy gravity. You good? Thank you. Number 2. Parachuting cars onto a mountain. Right. Furious 7. Roman, you need some fresh air? Because you're about to get a whole lot of it. Dom's crew needs to get the drop on a convoy of villains. While the bad guys drive along a mountain range, the heroes get on a plane, strap parachutes on their cars, and drop down into the road. Touchdown, baby! Everyone except for Roman lands on the road perfectly before taking on the convoy. Physicist Matthew Claban said this stunt was completely feasible. He found that as long as the parachutes could support the weight of the cars and the wind was calm, they should have relatively little issue landing safely. However, Kleban did note that unless they were incredibly lucky, they'd all end up off course as Roman did, 
Maybe the crew owes Roman an apology. Sit tight, Roman. We'll come back for you. This is not the plan! Before we get too fast and furious and tell more tales of defying science, let's look at a few honorable mentions. Hijacking a fuel truck. Right. Fast and furious. Jumping from a speeding train. Right. Fast five. Dom's charger does a long wheelie. Wrong. The fast and the furious. Driving away from the bridge jump. Wrong. Too fast, too furious. Driving out of the front of a plane. Wrong. Fast and Furious 6. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Chasing a plane down the runway. Wrong. Fast and Furious 6. You be careful. This is who we are. The award for the biggest franchise miscalculation goes to The Runway in Fast and Furious 6. In the film, Owen Shaw forces Dom's sister Mia onto a plane and attempts to take off. <laughs> Dom's crew proceeds to speed down a runway to save her. The entire sequence lasts for around 13 minutes. A plane moving fast enough to take off would be moving at over 100 miles per hour. If the plane was going that fast, as long as the movie suggests, the runway needed to be over 25 miles long. The longest runway in the world isn't even 4 miles. Either they build unnecessarily long runways in the Fast and Furious universe, or the riders just didn't do their research. Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.